All right, so I know there's quite a few videos online, obviously, to how to assemble Joy-Cons um, and even assemble our BoxyPixel metal Joy-Cons, um, but I thought it'd be worthwhile to get into some of the details, um, specifically on some of the warnings um, and show you kind of some of the techniques that I use. So um, first, let's just just start building. Um, I'll show you kind of what you need first, actually. So, of course, you'll need your metal shells and your metal buttons. Um, actually, so the D-pad is is necessary, obviously, because we, we take out the buttons on the left-hand Joy-Con. We put them in with the D-pad. But uh, one thing you could use if you ever needed to or wanted to is you could replace these metal buttons with plastic, um, conventional plastic buttons if you needed to on your right, right Joy-Con. So you need those um, in terms of tools. Well, obviously you need Joy-Cons. Um, we always use new ones for builds. Um, oh, by the way, that reminds me. So there have been some aftermarket kits out there that um, people have attempted to put in Joy-Cons. Sometimes they work. Sometimes the fit is just ever so slightly off. So keep that in mind. Um, what else? Obviously the most important thing is a Phillips screwdriver. I don't know what size this is. Doesn't say. Um, but what I do is just take out a fastener, match it up with your, with your Phillips screwdriver, make sure it fits well. And you'll need a tri-wing screwdriver for disassembly. Um, some of the other things are kind of optional here, but I have them. I use this just to pry batteries out of position, tweezers when I'm handling uh, some of the smaller components sometimes. Exacto blade, I use that sometimes when making some adjustments or cutting off flashing. Um, this is actually only used for this double-sided, super, super thin 3M tape. Um, thin in, in that, in this direction. Let me see if I can get a rough measurement. So it's approximately 0.2 millimeters thick by just under five millimeters wide. So um, I use this for the buttons and we'll, I'll show you that later. The joy cons themselves. Should get three three bags. And all these are different length fasteners. So you get the smallest is I believe this is two millimeter. And then just slightly longer than that is three millimeter. This is the majority of the fasteners used. And the last is the long five millimeters, and these should have, you only need two, usually there'll be one or two extra, um, but one of the common questions I get is, you know, I'm, miss, I'm missing fasteners, because I think intuitively you think this longer fastener attaches the two shells together, the four fasteners that hold the front and the rear. So, these four holes. Um, actually use three millimeter fasteners for almost every hole and use five millimeter only in this bottom hole. So that, so I intentionally left out um, not many fasteners. I only put in a few so that you, you'd either question me or go back to the installed instructions. So if you're just trying to force a five millimeter in some of these holes, chances are you're gonna, you're gonna break a fastener or strip the thread. So, and since I'm on that topic, that is probably the biggest risk or the thing to pay attention to is um, stripping fasteners, stripping the heads, stripping the threads, um, getting a fastener stuck in a hole. Um, so in order to prevent that, the first thing I do is look at your parts, look and make sure there's not, sometimes there's plugs, I put plugs in for anodizing, so make sure there's not any you'll see a white plug. It'll be really obvious. You'll see it kind of plugging up the hole. So look at all your holes. 
Make sure there's not anything sticking in there. So there's not anything in there. Everything looks clear. If you really wanted to be careful, you could um, take a fastener and just run it in a little bit to make sure everything's okay. But you know, with that, you risk something getting stuck because you don't know how far you have to stick the fastener in. But um, so maybe don't maybe don't do that. Okay, so disassembly. So the method I use for the Joy-Cons is to not take apart any of the ribbon or flex cables inside. Some people like to disconnect everything or, or disconnect several things. I do not do that. I don't do that because for me personally, um, I just have a hard time getting some of the connections together because they're so small. Obviously it can be done, so if you prefer to do it that way, that's okay. Um, also have these, so these are, these are build fixtures. I use them for assembly, disassembly. You can see they kind of just fit in there like that. And what, I, what they do is they keep that joystick and buttons um, off the surface of the table. So when you're, it's, it's particularly useful when you're assembling because you don't have when you're putting your silicone on, your stuff's not just popping out everywhere. It's It all kind of sits kind of flat. Um, so let's take this apart. So there's four fasteners here. And again, this is the tri-wing screwdriver. I don't think I currently have these for sale on the website. They come with so many different components that you purchase online now that so many people have them and they just aren't really selling very well. So another important note is you will not use these fasteners. Any fastener that you take out, these are plastites, plastite fasteners. So they're designed for plastics. If you use them in your metal housings, unfortunately the metal will be ruined, the threads will be ruined because the threads are super, super small. So whatever you do, just set those out of the way, throw them away in the trash, however you want to do that. So, um, okay, all the fasteners are out. So what I like to do is carefully pry this away. Um, one thing to be careful of is don't force it open really, really hard. Um, just because I like to keep the, again, I keep the, the flex cables attached. So I kind of just watch it kind of slowly pry open. And I don't go any further than that because as you can see, those flex cables are right there. So if you went and opened it really hard, you could disconnect those. So now that it's open, I'm gonna gently do that. I put it in my fixture. The lighting's not the best. Let me see if I can get get this outside. Actually on a rolling table. Because it's so nice outside. A little better lighting hopefully you can see that so okay now that we're inside now we go back to the Phillips so on this we got one down in here one here and one here so that's gonna remove this gray plastic piece or it's not gonna remove it yet but it will get there Kind of trying to look at what I'm doing and look around this. I'm using my phone for a camera here. OK. 
Okay. So the next thing I do is I take this piece out so this just slides out like that. Let me zoom in. This piece just slides out like that. And then I like to just get the battery out of the way. So you know, don't take anything metal, something kind of flat and blunt. And I usually just wedge it under here, wedge between the gray plastic piece and the battery. And it's connected at this side. So again, just don't go pull on too hard. So we'll put that to the side and get this flag out of the way. And so to get this out of the way, what I do is I kind of flip it over. Get that out of the way like that. And I've got the PC. I've got two fasteners here, these silver ones. This one and this one. And then our joystick. There's two here. One. Two. And you know, I usually do this early on if I can remember. There's one fastener here. And the reason why I try to take this off sooner than later is just that I think it reduces the chance of yanking on this back piece here and disconnecting things. So once you disconnect that, there's going to be a small black button and nothing will be holding it in. So, so just wiggle that out, just lift it up like that. And you can see the black button and that's what we need to keep. So that button there. Keep that. So we don't need the rear anymore. Now, take out your right button, set that aside. So next I loosen up this motor, so kind of just pry that out. There's tape on the bottom, so that's all that's, all that's holding it. And sometimes it'll kind of still be connected and just kind of either cut it or force it out and then this here this will have so this piece right here when it comes out it's got adhesive underneath that little black ribbon ribbon cable so just kind of peel it peel it to get that adhesive out and then just like a book Let's get this out of the way again. So just like a book, I kind of take the PCB and that, and I kind of open it. And so usually the joystick will want to stay in the hole, so I kind of got to keep that going with the board. Otherwise, the disconnect, the disconnect it. So get that out. And this piece, sometimes it sticks. If it does, just kind of carefully peel that off. So now the only part, and right now you gotta be a little bit careful because see that orange, this orange flex cable right there. If you start forcing everything, that's gonna rip off. So this is where this whole big flat antenna is gonna have to be removed. So find something to wedge it underneath and it'll pop off. So now there's your that page of the book goes over, goes out of the way. So that's it. So you need so the electronics are out. Um, pay attention to the direction of this. I like to put this in so these little 
pieces here in the center are facing the same way. You're going to need the silicone, the silicone. You're going to need both the button and the silicone for this. Maybe if you probably couldn't see what I was pointing to. Okay, all this. You're going to need everything except for the plastic buttons. The A, B, X, Y buttons. So, let's just set this here for a moment. Get out our right new shell. And then, usually what I do is I keep everything until I need to move it over because it's just... I think it's easy, easier to keep track of the way stuff goes in. So the home button. Silicone, I'm not ready for that yet. Plus button. So there's our plus, plus button and the silicone for that. And so now all these little plastic buttons aren't used, the housing's not used. So you can install the plus button. Silicone over it. Make sure it's actually covering it. The edges sometimes don't want to go over the metal. Same with this. So you can see. So make sure all the edges, make sure the silicone is covering all the edges. Same with this clear piece. Okay. Now the button. This is be used in the left joy-con. Okay, so this is kind of an optional step. However, I found that this can help. So because these are metal on metal and because of the aspect ratio of just how shallow the button is, it can under certain conditions and certain if, if you play in such a way that you're putting a rotational load and pushing on the button at the same time and so basically it just depends on how you press the button if you're pressing the button they can sometimes stick for some people so what I found along with uh, the help of one of the people in the community. I don't know if I want to mention their name because they may not want to be in here. Um, we found that if I add a double-sided adhesive to the back side of the buttons, that'll keep the silicone stuck to the, um, the buttons themselves. And what that'll do is sorry, um, keep it from rotating. So if you keep it from rotating, then it won't get hung up. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is you may or may not need to do this. You could try assembling without it if you wanted. I would just do it just because it's super easy to do. I'm just using these flush cutters to cut the double-sided tape into squares. I put them on the back side of each one and then once I get it in the housing, I'll remove the other side of the tape not the double-sided tape backing. Okay.
this is where you want to kind of make sure you got it pretty close to lined up before you bring it down. So you may want to catch it on one side. Check out all the edges. Want to make sure that it's down right along all these edges. You don't see any metal, it's a metal lip. And I press it down, make it stick to the buttons. Okay. Now we reintroduce the electronics. Pretty much the opposite of before, so I place this in. Now at this point, make sure that this hasn't moved. And then bring this over. At this point, you can put in your motor. Um, so, what you can do with the motor, by the way, so this is what creates the, the vibrations. Um, could put some capped on tape, maybe something thin, but something substantial on the bottom side. Maybe layer it up if you wanted to. Uh, it can make a metallic sound. It does have this foam in here that kind of sandwiches everything together, but if you really wanted to ensure that you don't have any metallic sound in there, try putting two or three layers of Kapton tape on there depending on the thickness of your Kapton. Okay, so I'm just double checking to make sure. I'm trying to look around this camera. Oh, let's see, I wasn't too careful with my joystick. I just let it flop around, so don't do that. kind of make sure those are kind of out of the way because when we bring this down and over this little piece here could get hung up or the wire could get underneath this see that little protrusion so next so here's where I start using the fastener so on areas where you just have a board thickness so we're only attaching a board, we don't have any additional thicker parts. In general, I use the uh, two millimeter or the smallest fasteners. So I always start the fastener, I do not tighten it at all. Make sure it's got a couple threads in there. When there's more than one going in. And then from here what I do is I there's gonna be two more fasteners going in, but not until we put this gray piece in this. So the fasteners go, you can kind of see, well maybe you can't, but here and here. So up at the top. So what I try to do is I kind of, I look down and make sure that they're fairly centered before I tighten these. And by tighten, I don't mean tight. It's, I don't have any torque specs, but it does not need to be tight. They're, they're metal, they're, they're machine screws. Machine screws are completely different than plastides, right? Plastides are, are, they take some force because they're cutting their own threads as they go in. These are machine screws that should feel smooth. It should You should be able to turn it with your fingers like, 
I'm barely even putting any effort into it as I do this, for example. Same with this. Again, this is, I'm putting two screws in, so we're gonna start them both first. Start to feel a little bit of resistance, and we'll stop and go back to the other. So I'm tightening them, but not, not that, not as, just enough to make sure the piece of pieces are mated together. You don't need to give it that extra little bit. That extra little bit's what's, what's gonna strip the threads. I wish I could tell you a, a better way, but it's just, it's just something that you get a feel for after doing so many parts, so many machine screws. And <laughs> I, I used to do a lot of engine work and knowing what that, that feels like before things break, unfortunately. Um, okay. So now we can rotate this, which it's already started to rotate into position. I'll rotate that. Well, we forgot something here. So we need to install this. Sometimes I, I do rotate it over, but before I put it in the final spot, I'll kind of sneak this in. So the spring goes, compresses on that little post. Trying to see past my camera here. And then this goes on top. Kind of felt that little click there. Try it out, make sure that that's all reasonably lined up. Make sure that's pretty much down here. And then the next thing I look for is over here to make sure that little post right here, there's nothing in between keeping it from going down. So, so that's all good. Get a longer fastener. So this is the medium size or three millimeters. Boy, I hope I got those fasteners. I hope I'm telling you the right fastener length. So I'll start that. Almost tight, but not, not quite there. Yeah, everything seems good. That little, just that, that little extra bit. Okay. Battery goes in place. It's held by the existing adhesive. This little antenna flag goes down into the slot like that, and then carefully route the wire. into position. Something like that. Okay. Get the rear housing and our button that hopefully wasn't knocked onto the floor yet. So this button has a groove, a slot. Can see that it's got these two is it's a channel right and that's what fits into our piece down here so it also has a little tab like a tiny tiny little tab you can see it pointed and I'm gonna turn it away from the edge this edge I'm turning it away from this edge so you can see the tab right there and the channel is going so it can fit like that. And now it just moved out of position, but... Okay. What I do here is I'll usually get a, a three millimeter screw sometimes. There are instances where a three millimeter may not work. It may, it may bottom out. That's when you'd switch to a two millimeter before forcing it in. So we got our three millimeter ready. It's on our screwdriver. Our buttons in. Once again, in position. Put this over. Put 
the one fastener into the hole. That hole. You see? So what I'm looking out for is that going down? Is it going in? Is there a gap? Everything's good. Okay. Kind of check this one last time. You can also, if you have a fixture or these fixtures are on Thingiverse, I think. Um, I try to upload fixtures for people if you want to download them. Make sure the buttons feel reasonably okay. Make sure the home button's right side up. You don't want to press too hard because there's really everything that holds it in place is when it's all sandwiched together. So, so bring the parts together. best practices again um, start all the fasteners first and don't don't rely or don't um, require that the fasteners are pulling the parts together so if it's sandwiching something together hold it together with your hands and then use the fast then screw the fasteners um, instead of letting the fasteners pull the parts together. It just puts additional stress on the fasteners, or on the threads themselves. So again, three millimeter, three millimeter, three, and this is the only long one. Here's the only long one we're getting out. Okay, so now they're all close. So now I just kind of do one final check to make sure everything is lined up. Before I do it, and I'm squeezing them together. See just that little, just that little bit, tiny, tiny bit. Okay, this one's I had to go a couple more turns, but all right, that's it. you feel the click okay All right, on to the other one the other one should be a little quicker Plastites, don't use them. Don't use plastites. I'll have to make a video on what the differences are between plastites and machine screws. Just know for right now, they are completely different. The thread pitch isn't the same. The, the shape of the thread isn't the same. It allows for uh, the threads in the plastic to be much thicker when they're cut. Okay, so same thing. Open this up carefully, like that. You can feel it, but don't let it get. Oh, there it pops. They're good. Get my fixture. out right away this time I remembered so it doesn't get so it hung up on something and then rip it out still can but at least it's smaller that's the way I see it 
Alright, plastic, throw it away. And so this one is a little bit different from the other one. Okay. So this one has a fastener here, but all the other fasteners are underneath the battery. So same thing though, let's take off the battery. And just slowly kind of let it sink in, pops out. And I'll pry off the motor gently. Don't pull the wires out. Get those out of the way. Be aware that this, this motor, the magnet in there, is going to suck in fastener. So if you're assembling and something's not fitting right, could be there's a fastener between your motor and the housing. So here's our four fasteners. Two of them are actually only are holding the plastic part. Two of these are inside and you can get to them, but they're holding just the PCB. I'm just gonna take them all out. So this one's a little easier than the other one in that this flex cable is quite a bit longer. So you can just put it out of the way just like that. Okay, so we can't just take the joystick out yet because we have this underneath the flex cable. So we have three fasteners here on these. Um, you gotta take them all out at once. They're connected by a flex cable. See that fastener I left in there? There we go. Okay. All right. So let's move these. Now I can get to that last fastener. So again, just like the other one. like a book and the joystick's gonna want to stay in the hole but we'll force it yeah so it's free okay keep this oh did I keep the you know what I forgot to tell you so when we took off this Keep that again. Okay, so for this, we're going to keep everything except for the button for these four directional buttons. So that's it. Actually, let's just set that somewhere and get the front aluminum in. I have noticed, I have noticed on this part, um, this one. So sometimes there's some flash that needs to be removed from injection molding over here on one of the sides. Just take a quick look. It can hang up on your, on your button and make it not actuate very well. So just kind of trim it off. Put it in there. Silicone over that. 
So the only thing we need left from this is the minus button and the silicone that goes over that. Get rid of the buttons. And we need these, I'll put these in. There's that. I'm always checking the edges to make sure the silicone's down over all the metal edges. Like, the, and what I'm talking about by metal edges is just little locating features that are in every every silicone piece that holds them. Okay. Checking the edges, everything looks good. Start bringing this carefully over. It can be a little intimidating to have this big mess of electronics, but just take it slow and just kind of start bringing stuff over slowly and it all just kind of start falling in place because everything's already kind of, all the wires are kind of pre bent they kind of have a memory to them. So, the motor goes into place, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's still got adhesive on the bottom, so that'll kind of stay where it's gonna go. Battery's just kind of gotta stay out of the way. Just kind of make sure you swing this this piece over. The joystick wants to go where it wants to go. Um, make sure this is over the joystick on top of it. And then the first thing we got to do is I, I'll do the joystick first just because sometimes I forget and then I have to undo parts to get to it again. I always want to do those two first for some reason. Can't. Gotta do this first. Okay. So start them both. They're both started. Snug them up. Sorry if you can't see some of this. I'm going to start putting it. So next I'm going to start putting in these three little fasteners that go and hold those top, those boards near the top. Up here. started. Start the next one. Another thing you can try is sometimes these small fasteners, not a lot of thread engagement on these small small little ones. They're, they're, they could strip. Um, there's just not a lot of room for to put them in general when designing it. So don't force them, but at the same time, they can get a little bit of gunk in them. I think it's from the anodizing process. Um, there's a little bit of white powdery stuff in there, so you may have to every once in a while have to run this fastener in and run it in, run it in, run it out, and run it in. You know, just kind of you could 
compress air in there to make sure, but just something to keep in mind. Um, trying to think of everything. Okay, let's get that. So now I use the smaller, so those are, these are two millimeters. So these are the shortest ones, right? Cause you're only doing the board thickness. I'm the joystick three millimeters and now we're gonna, which is the medium size. And then we're gonna go back to the smaller two millimeter size and attach this board only on the holes. So these are through holes. Now the sun comes out, it's kind of hard to see. So you can see on this part right here, this hole right here is a through hole. It's it's not it's not attaching the plastic part to anything. So so this hole and this hole are gonna get the smaller ones. I think you could probably do three three millimeters. You'd have to feel it once it goes in. It's not gonna be a bad thing necessarily if you start it. It just doesn't doesn't want to go in. But again, if you're if you're feeling resistance and you're not there, you're not bottomed out. Bottomed out meaning the thread isn't, or the fastener hasn't captured whatever piece you're fastening. And it's, you know, if this was still loose and I still had it sticking up, I'm gonna have to go with a shorter fastener. Okay, now, so we, before we put this on, we're gonna put our, which one is this? The left shoulder on. Sure that it's in the right it's in position make sure it's down down and not there's not something holding it up ah. and now for three millimeters for the two two fasteners that hold the gray plastic and then this hole. This hole. Looks good, I think. Battery. Wrap that around there. Make sure the buttons work. The other side, this button with the tab facing me, facing this way, and the slots going this way. Oh. Forgot to get a fastener ready, it just makes it easier for me if I get the fastener on the screwdriver. This is three millimeter, but if it doesn't fit, two millimeter can work. Okay. Oh, one thing, since I'm on this one, for some reason, 
the plastic. I mean, we're talking about really small differences in parts, but so if your if your Joy-Con fits kind of tight on, and I don't know why, but it's only been for me on the left. A way to fix that is to adjust the way this fits onto the aluminum piece. So there's two locating posts, right, that locate this rail, I guess you'd call it. Um, there's a post down here, and then there's the post that the fastener actually goes to. So if you either adjust the plastic or the posts themselves, probably the plastic's gonna be easiest, but so this hole, if you kind of enlarged it, just a small amount, I mean, very small amount, you know, you can take a razor blade, stick it in the hole, and kind of scrape one side, almost make it elongated, I guess, but probably wouldn't even see the, the amount of difference. That's gonna let this rail move out. It's gonna create more space for when you're inserting it. It's a small tweak that can be made if you need to. So again, one five millimeter. I'm gonna put the five millimeter in first. It goes here. And then all the other three are gonna be three millimeter, the medium length. Check, make sure everything's lined up all right. I'll squeeze it together and then I fasten it. this on YouTube but where I'm gonna post this but uh, I think if I do put it on YouTube I'm supposed to say subscribe and ring the bell or or just do whatever you want. Good luck.